Hi, I'm Dala. And today we're going to be looking at some of the secrets that are stashed deep within the Nissan Leaf BMS. This is going to be an exciting one, so let's get started. Okay, time to continue cracking the Leaf BMS wide open. Let's hand it over to an expert that will take it from here. Before we begin, I think there is a need of a refresher on what the BMS is and what it does on the Nissan Leaf. BMS is an abbreviation for Battery Management System. Nissan likes to call it LBC in their internal documentation. The BMS is what keeps the battery safe to use. It performs several safety critical things like balancing and monitoring each cell's voltage, checking overall temperatures, and then based on this information, determines how much power you can put in or extract from the battery. It also calculates the state of charge, state of health, internal resistance and insulation resistance, plus more. It is a very sophisticated device, to put it lightly. So why do we need to dive deeper into the BMS? Well, it has been a pain point for any type of battery upgrade. It does not matter if you are performing an OEM upgrade or swapping out the cells inside the battery, you will still have issues with the BMS. The cheapest method to make a new battery work has so far been to use a CAN bridge. With this you can correct CAN messages heading towards the vehicle and you can get perfect instrumentation and operation with the new battery. Another more expensive option has been to flash the BMS. This is still quite uncommon due to the high cost associated with the flash. You also had to mail your BMS to a specialist that can perform the flashing. Due to this inconvenience of both having to ship and pay a large price, can bridges have been the preferred method. But what if we could change this and make the BMS reflash the cheapest and easiest way to correct a battery upgrade? Another large reason why we require to interface more with the BMS is um, these do-it-yourself power walls. Take for instance the 30 kWh Nissan Leaf battery. Due to a software bug that caused the battery to incorrectly calculate the remaining battery capacity, Nissan started a recall campaign for these batteries. You could bring your vehicle in for this software update. But one problem though, what should we now do when we are using these batteries in stationary storage without any way of driving this power wall to Nissan to update it? I mean, I have the updated bin file just sitting there. Without any way of flashing this, we are losing capacity. But before we get to flashing, let's start a bit more simple. The BMS has some advanced commands that are not easily accessible. For instance, before you can flash or issue any of these advanced commands, you have to pass a secret cryptographic handshake. Here we have the commands needed to reset the degradation data on a Nissan Leaf. There is a lot to unpack here, so let's break it down line by line. Oh, and before you go and put angry comments about making this accessible to the public, uh, stating that this will crash the used leaf market since you won't know if any battery has been reset, let me tell you that there are already four apps available on the App Store that will perform this reset for you. The only difference here is now that we're making this fully open source. So. These lines were captured from a diagnostic session, uh, a consult 3 plus tool was used. Here we send some commands to get the BMS into advanced mode. You can note also the question marks. This is reverse engineering after all, so we don't know exactly what each bit stands for. But the diagnostic tool, which uh, sends the 79B CAN commands, initiates the advanced mode. The battery replies with a 7BB CAN message and sends us a cryptographic challenge to solve. This challenge changes every 10 milliseconds, so simply playing back a batch of CAN messages won't work. Nissan anticipated this attack vector. Another safety measure they put in is that if you fail to solve this challenge, the BMS locks itself for 10 seconds before you can try again. Given how long the challenge is, this basically prevents any brute force attempts. So this is a very clever design. So this is where the magic happens. 
Once we have the numbers, we can solve this crypto challenge by performing some masked bitwise rotation and multiplication, some short mask sum and product followed up with computing the masked XOR product and to top it off with some cyclic XOR hashing. Whew, mathematics sure is fun. If you want to look at the source code needed for solving this, I have links in the description. After successfully solving the challenge, we can get back to sending and receiving CAN messages. We reply with the solution and the BMS hopefully acknowledges this and we can proceed with the elevated command to reset the degradation data. Pretty neat stuff. While this might seem simple, it uh, took a few weeks to get to this point. Like I mentioned, the source code for this is available in the description. This functionality has been implemented into the latest version of Battery Emulator and I am happy to announce that three 30kWh batteries with the glitched software have already been reset successfully. This allowed them to extract more capacity from the batteries, around 5kWh was gained. Another success story was that we repaired a lightning damaged battery. The BMS had been replaced and the state of health was no longer matching. So this reset degradation data was man managed to also clear this situation. So very nice. We even managed to get a 2011 leaf that had gotten a glitched 30 kilowatt hour battery installed back to 100%. This allowed the vehicle to regain quite the amount of battery capacity and a very satisfied owner. Nissan would not touch a 2011 vehicle that has been fitted with this glitchy battery due to the VIN not matching the recall campaign. Now how silly is that? Luckily we are learning how to keep these aging vehicles going for longer since Nissan no longer shows interest in keeping their vehicles on the road after the warranty period ends. I think they just want to sell you a new car. Ugh. But okay, so what's next? Uh, the firmware updating and custom firmware flashing is being worked on heavily by the mighty safety oogs. They are the reason this video exists. Without safety oogs, none of these reverse engineering would have been possible. So massive thanks to them. If you are interested in following the daily updates, I suggest joining the My Nissan Leaf forum. Safety oogs just posted the first app details. The idea is to have the advanced commands and flashing available via this app and skip the need to having to pay a large price and ship your BMS all over the world. This year in particular has driven the LEAF development so much forward, and this is paving a really nice road forward for LEAF battery upgrades and repairs. I'll be sure to cover this topic again once the firmware flashing is developed and ready. So for now, thank you for watching this video and uh, see you in the next one. Dal out.